Bob Van Dillen joined us. There, there it is. It is. <laughs> okay, good. All right, listen. You, you, you got to play what by we're the looking rules. at, Bob. Yeah. It's part of the rules. This is what we're coming out with, all right? So October, usually we get our, our winter outlook for the next few months. You're talking about the winter months, right? December right through February. And a, a little bit of a change here. If you look at it right there, uh, we've got some warmer temperatures that are still going to be in play down to the south, you guys. But maybe not as much mm. when you get to the northern part of the Great Lakes because we think this La Nina that's going to develop is going to be a little weaker and a little shorter lives. So that's what it looks like. Wetter, of course, we're going to find that for the Pacific Northwest. That's because the jet stream is going to be up there. And also north of the Ohio Valley at this point, you're talking about the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest, a wetter type of winter. Let me show you what we're looking at right here. Developing La Nina, that's going to influence the winter weather pattern, at least up in North America. We're going to watch that. It really affects the entire globe, really, if you look at it that way. But the weak nature of La Nina will lead to a less typical type of forecast for a La Nina winter, meaning other factors are going to come and play more than the La Nina itself. The La Nina is going to be weak, and it's only going to last essentially for the winter months. It doesn't look like it's going to drag on into the spring at all, at least not at this point. That's the forecast. Of course, larger swings in the weather pattern are going to be compared to last winter. That's what we're going to find. So this is the zone that we watch. All about the water temperatures, right? Where you see the blue shaded colors right here, that's where you have below average water temperatures. And this spot that we really zone in on is right near Tahiti. So you've got that right here. That's the equatorial Pacific. Uh, we are still in neutral right now. So we're not in La Nina any longer. We're not in, uh, we're not in El Nino any longer or La Nina yet. We're still in so neutral. But the forecast goes down a little bit lower. So the cooler temperatures is what brings on the La Nina. That's what we're thinking is going to happen. You can see the model average is going to be there. But some of these trends, you can see the water temperature, you guys, go at sometimes six degrees below. So this is going to be weak. You're talking about one degree or less when you talk about those water temperatures being below the average. So a weak La Nina, not six, which doesn't seem like a lot at all, but it is at major implications. This one's going to be weak. It's also going to be short live. So let me show you the last La Nina winter that we had. And this was back there two years ago. And I want you to look at a forecast. This was the forecast, which would be typical when you see the jet stream do one of these numbers. This is what actually panned out, though. Look how bad that forecast was. Right. So that was because we had the jet stream sink a little farther down than the south and just blast into California. That is when the northern Sierra range had the blockbuster amount of snowfall. Remember, they had 900 inches in some of those areas. Record snowfall totals. This is two years ago. So you really can't count on the La Nina where it's going to be. What you look at more is the shorter term forecast. And that's like the weekly trends. And we're looking right here. This is the North Atlantic Oscillation. This one switches around every one to two weeks. So when it's in a positive phase, meaning the jet stream is more zone it has that warmer air logged in down to the southeast and the east coast all the way up to close to New England. Now, when you get that negative phase, you get a buckle in the jet stream. That allows that colder air to filter on down, and that means you have that cold air in place. Also, notice the position of the jet. That's when you start seeing the possibility of nor'easters develop. So that would be a short-term thing that we would watch also for a snowmaker. And if you have a La Nina, it looks like you're going to see the cooler air up to the north already, maybe breaking down. The other big thing that we watch is also the Arctic Oscillation. Strong jet stream, it's going to keep all that Arctic air bottled up in place. If it starts to weaken, the colder air overflows, spills it down a little bit because it can't hold it all in. That's when you start seeing the colder air coming across the east coast. So really what you look for when you're talking about major snowmakers, it's more weekly than it would be for the entire season, right? So you're looking at the, eight, the Atlantic Oscillation, you're looking at the Arctic Oscillation, all those right in the play. But here's what we're calling for the official winter outlook. I'm going to wrap it up for you right there. Warmer down to the south. And again, we've got warm sea surface temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico. They're going to be riding high the entire winter. That will keep your temperatures across the Gulf Coast on the warm side, including all the way out towards the Atlantic side of Florida and inwards areas too. Up to the north you go, though. Winter-wise, when you look at the uh, winter outlook with temperatures, it is going to be warm. I mean, this is going to go all the way up in that region from New England down across the Gulf and cooler for the northwest because you've got more clouds, more rain, more snow makers. So here's what we're looking for. This is the official forecast. Warmer and drier than average across the southern tier, especially in the southwest. And you guys, that is typical. More snow, colder temperatures for the northwest and Great Lakes. Again, typical, but it is a weak La Nina. So those other factors come into play. Otherwise, those other oscillations, something you watch, that's weekly, not seasonal. Also, major northeast cities likely to see average snowfall or below yet again. So probably most likely below. So if you want a big blockbuster snowfall maker in New York City, you go back to 1995 to 1996. That was a weak La Nina, but everything phased right where we saw the huge amounts of snow right there on President's Day in 1996. Hmm. So, I mean, listen, I'm yeah. not saying there's not a chance, but I'm <laughs> saying the average 
This is the average. We took this actually 26 years worth of data. Yeah, I like right that. Here. So we're averaging right here for weak La Ninas. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like? Pacific wow. Northwest is highly favored. Blockbuster. Yeah. You know what I They're mean? Always blockbuster. Weak La Nina, strong La Nina. The Northwest Coast is going to get pounded. You're talking about the Sierra Nevada range and areas up to the north of Cascades. Even the northern Rockies, you're going to get blasted. When you get across the Great Lakes, and it all depends on some cold Arctic air outbreaks going over the warmer waters for your lake effect or if that cold air phases with a storm around the coastline. So it looks like it's going to be highly variable. Mm. Yeah. Marissa, not to bring you in, but I'm thinking <laughs> of the Great Lakes. Um, last yeah. season, the Great Lakes was unbelievably Western warm. Yeah, it was it, it, they, they yeah. dealt with They dealt with it. And I, I guess with the forecast that we have now put out by NOAA, mm -hmm. that's going to be the area that might be favored for some of the most snow this season. I mean, yeah, they didn't really freeze. So right. no, they continue exactly. to be snowmakers. Mm -hmm. And if you get the just the right amount of fetch, the right amount of direction, you can pump out a lot of snow. Which you can get blasted. And I'll show you this map right here. Yeah. Sometimes I've, I've seen it where the snowmakers go right across mm -hmm. Lake Superior, Lake Huron, and going yeah. all the way into Lake Ontario. And that's a big teleconnection. Yeah. That's when you get crushed with lake effects. Now, you get the same thing when you get around uh, Buffalo, too. If you get that wind right off of the entire stretch of Lake Erie, that fetches a big one. So th that's a possibility, especially yeah. if it's warmer up there and you get the cold air arctic outbreaks. That's lake effects. All right, Bob. Um, what is it? Reserve that frozen ice uh, fishing uh, oh, expedition yeah. that you have for Lake Erie, because it looks like that lake's going to freeze over this season. We well, hope so. It is usually the one so. to freeze first. I will yeah. say, and Bob, earlier I was telling you that um, the Woolly Worm Festival, oh, that's right. which takes place in oh, North yeah. Carolina, I was doing a little bit more digging, and it turns out it was impacted by Helene. It actually is held every year. The 47th annual is supposed to be this weekend. That's always um, and fun, they had to too. cancel That's because of the bad. destruction. Yeah. Gosh. And uh, but the woolly worms are always fun. It, it's um it's not really folklore. It's just a fun right. What would it be? Just a fun thing a that we do. Yeah, it's folklore. We'll I was give looking. It to you. It's yeah. there are 13 body segments in a woolly worm <laughs> and 13 weeks in the winter season. So they do each segment oh, to predict why. each week I of winter. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Wow. But um but yeah, our thoughts with with the community there. Regardless of weather and um, what's happening, you know, with the, they should say the forecast. Yeah. Winter is coming. Yes, it is. Oh, it, it felt like it this morning. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. 30 degrees in North Jersey when I came in on the train. So, yeah. An early taste. And we, we should mention, too, Bob, before we let you go, is that this is going to get refined one more time. The, the winter outlook, the yep. CPC, they put these things out months in advance. But mm -hmm. uh, today's the, the big day where Noah's, Noah's uh, officially launching it. And, and we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always. February. Listen, we'll get one in, in November as well. Yeah. I don't think we'll see much unless we see a drastic cool down in the water temperatures out there by the Pacific and get a La Nina that's firmly in, in sconce. But that yeah. La Nina, the development is only 60% shot at this point. Remember earlier in the season, it was almost 80. Yeah. Now it's 60% shot, and it looks like it's going to last a lot shorter, too, from November through February, not going into spring. Uh, and one final note. Well, I hate to – the confidence, when, when you see the confidence so high on these maps, that's yeah. the one thing where it's like, all right, there's a strong signal here. Hopefully we don't see a developing drought. We know that Florida has been drenched this that's past season. Yep. But when you get those confidence levels a little higher, it's, it's something to watch. The drought about. looks like it will build for yeah. Texas, New Mexico, and probably Arizona. Yeah, I hate, hate to hear it. Well, Bob, good to see you. Thank you. We'll see you next hour all right. um, on America's Weather Center. Yep. And we'll be talking more about winter.